we do, join me as I recite the blessing before reading the Torah. Marehu et Adonai mevorach. Baruch Adonai mevorach leolam vaed. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Asher bekar banu mikol ha'amin. Venetan lanu et torato. Baruch atah Adonai. No ten ha Torah. Amen. Bless Adonai who is blessed. Blessed is Adonai who is blessed forever and ever. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who selected us from all the nations and gave us his Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Amen and amen. Today's portion by Ed Hanan. We're reading again Deuteronomy Devarim, chapter 3. And we'll read in Hebrew, verse 23 through 25. And it says in the Hebrew, it says, By et Hanan el Adonai, by et Hahi lemor. Adonai Elohim ata hahi lota lecharot et avdecha et god lecha ve et yarcha ha hazacha asher mi el vashamayim uva aretz asher ya ase chema chema asecha Vehigvu rotecha Ibrana de ere et haaretz Hatova asher de ever ha yarden Hahar hatov haze Veha levanun And now the closing prayer. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher netan lanu Torah emet Vechayolam neta betochenu Baruch ata Adonai Noten haTorah Amen Blessed are you Adonai our God, King of the universe. You have given us the Torah of truth and planted within us everlasting life. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Reading from Deuteronomy chapter 3, starting in verse 23. Moses forbidden to enter the land. Then I pleaded with Adonai. Adonai Elohim, you have begun to reveal your greatness to your servant and your strong hand for what other God is there in heaven or on earth that can do the works and mighty deeds that you do? Please let me go across and see the good land on the other side of the Arden, that wonderful hill country and the Lebanon. But Adonai was angry with me on account of you, and he didn't listen to me. Adis Adonai said to me, enough from you. Don't say another word to me about this matter. Climb up to the top of Pisgah and look out to the west, north, south, and east. Look with your eyes, but you will not go across this yard in. However, commission Yehoshua, encourage him, and strengthen him, for he will lead this people across and enable them to inherit the land that you will see. So we stayed in the valley across from Bet Peor. Moses commands obedience. Now, Israel, listen to the laws and rulings I am teaching you in order to follow them so that you will live 
and then you will go in and take possession of the land that Adonai, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In order to obey the mitzvot of Adonai, your God, which I am giving you, do not add to what I am saying and do not subtract from it. You saw with your own eyes what Adonai did at Baal Peor, that Adonai destroyed from among you all the men who followed Baal Peor. But you who stuck with Adonai your God are still alive today, every one of you. Look, I have taught you laws and rulings, just as Adonai my God ordered me, so that you can behave accordingly in the land where you are going in order to take possession of it. Therefore, observe them and follow them, for then all peoples will see you as having wisdom and understanding. When they hear of all these laws, they will say, this great nation is surely a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has God as close to them as Adonai our God is, whenever we call on him? What great nation is there that has laws and rulings as just as this entire Torah, which I am setting before you today? Only be careful and watch yourselves diligently as long as you live so that you won't forget what you saw with your own eyes so that these things won't vanish from your hearts. Rather, make them known to your children and grandchildren. The day you stood before Adonai your God at Horev, when Adonai said to me, gather the people to me and I will make them hear my very words so that they will learn to hold me in awe as long as they live on earth, so that they will teach their children. You approached and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain blazed with fire to the heart of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick mist. Then Adonai spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sounds of words, but saw no shape. There was only a voice. He proclaimed his covenant to you, which he ordered you to obey, the ten words, and he wrote them on two stone tablets. At that time, Adonai ordered me to teach you laws and rulings so that you would live by them in the land you are entering in order to take possession of it. Thank you. Can you still, how's the, I usually don't use the computer, but I have to today. All right, so we made it to Parashat Be'er Hanan, and I pleaded. Anyone here, here ever had to plead with God? Ever been in a position so um, so severe or so uh, critical or so uh, you can add the word that you you've pleaded with God? You know, these are the type of things that don't necessarily come around in life a lot. Um, but there are times, and this is one of them for, for Moshe. And you can imagine the children of Israel, he probably wasn't the only one who was pleading with God. Because remember, we talked about the rest of the children of Israel knew that he wouldn't make it into the land either. So God is hearing it probably from a lot of different people. Why, please, can't you do this, can't you? But once this ruling was given, that was it. There was no, sadly, there was no going back, as evidenced by the fact that he's pleading with him. I mean, once God says no, what do you have to lose at that point other than just begging, please, 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 please. So last week's portion, Devarim, we began um, the fifth book of Moshe and discussed what happened to him. Why was he forbidden to enter the land of promise? Uh, we discussed how God's people, both small and great, had a part to play in the decision by Hashem to leave Moshe on the other side. 
this is a very trying time for the people. Everyone of accountable age had his part to play in this decision. But ultimately, it was the responsibility of, the responsibility of Moshe to lead people to a particular standard. A, there was a minimum standard that he was required to have. We don't know exactly what it was. That's on God's side. But he, I, clearly, he didn't meet that standard. Whatever it was, he didn't meet it. And I don't know anybody who ever wants to, uh, or would ever want to be put in Moshe's position, especially now. It's wonderful when you're the one who leads the people out of uh, captivity and slavery, when everyone's talking good about you and uh, blessing you. That's a whole other thing now that they see you, um, you know, marked for death. Um, and they're going on, you know. It's nice when you're the one, you're the grandpa with all the money and you pay to get all the kids into Disneyland, the grandkids and everyone. Oh, the, oh thank you, Grandpa. That would, one, we're going to have this wonderful vacation. And then you get to the gates of Disneyland and Grandpa has a heart attack. And now he's got to go to the hospital while, guess what? The kids are going into Disneyland. How quickly they entered the Disneyland. They were going to forget, hey, we'll pray for Grandpa, but, you know, we're in Disneyland today. <laughs> Human nature. This is the decision they had to make. We got, I mean, Moses is going to die. We got to keep on going. And we know that it wasn't long after they get into the land. They've got new leadership. And they're, you know, they're moving into their homes. And they're busy about, that's all in the rearview mirror at this point. So here's Moses. He can't go. He's stuck. Not going any further than where he is. Everyone... Again, I said everyone of accountable age had a part to play in this. We talked about the merit of a, a, a family or the merit of the whole house of Israel. You think about it in your family. You, know, you have a family, say you, your siblings, your nieces, nephews, and say there's, I don't know, 30 or 40 of you. And two or three of them don't want to do something. Well, you know, 37 people who do want to do something, you know, they're gonna, we're going that direction. You think about when it's 30 of you want to do something, 10 don't. Think about when it's 2020. Or when all of a sudden the scale gets tipped and now there's 19 of you want to, 21 don't. Now there's 15 of you want to, 25 don't. And it may all come all the way down to there's one of you and 39 of you don't. Well, which... You get this idea of the scales tipping, the balance tipping. This is where the children of Israel were. There, weren't a, there wasn't enough merit in the house of Israel to overcome this, to st even stop them from doing the things that caused Moshe to stumble, or not caused him, but contributed to it. But at the end of the day, who was responsible? Moshe. So here he is, Deuteronomy 3.23. Then I pleaded with Adonai, God bless you. Adonai Elohim, you have begun to reveal your greatness to your servant and your strong hand. For what other God is there in heaven or on earth that can do the works and mighty deeds that you do? None. Please let me go across and see the good land on the other side of the Yarden. That wonderful hill country and the Lebanon. You know, at the time, Lebanon was beautiful and trees and cedars and just, you know. Um, but Adonai was very angry with me on account of you. God was mad at me because of you. Put yourself in that position where you actually have to say that to a group of people. God was mad at me because of you. You did it. He did, well. At this point, the whole finger-pointing thing doesn't even matter anymore. He can't go in. Adonai said to me, enough from you. Don't say another word to me about this matter. Have you ever begged Adonai so much that he told you that? Enough. Cut it out. Shekech. Shekech in Hebrew. 
which is a very not polite way of saying, shut up. Can you imagine how much you'd have to push him to do that? How much you would be pleading? I mean, what, you know, what does he have to lose at this point? At the very end. That being said, we look at the mercy of Hashem, verse 27. Climb up to the top of Mount Pisgah and look out to the west, north, south, south, and east. Look up with your eyes, but you will not go across this yard then. This reminds me of in the Psalms where the psalmist says, Only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked. The recompense of the wicked. Sometimes we get to see good, we get to see bad. That's all we ever get to see is just seeing it from a distance. Um, but if you're anything like me, I want to go into the land. Amen? I don't want to just have to see it from the one side. Verse 28 says, However, commission Yehoshua, encourage him and strengthen him, for he will lead his people across and enable them to inherit the land that you will see. So we stayed in the valley across from Bet Peor. Now he's got to train his replacement. You're losing your job. You're about to die. You're not of the land. And by the way, you need to train your replacement. I mean, it just gets worse and worse, the situation that he's going through. And then it continues, verse 6. One, now this is the mitzvah, the laws and rulings which Adonai your God ordered me to teach you for you to obey in the land you were crossing over to possess. You know, when I read this again, something stood out to me. So this is the mitzvah, the laws and the rulings that Adonai your God ordered me to teach you for you to obey, not here, not here in the desert. Where? In the land that you are crossing over to possess. He's not even going to even get to see them obey or disobey the command at this point. But all of this is culminating in 40 years in the desert, all the things he's taught him, so that when they finally step into the land. So that you will fear I deny your God and observe his, all his regulations and mitzvot that I am giving you, you, your child, and your grandchild as long as you live, and so that you will have long life. Therefore, listen, Israel, and take care to obey um, so that the things will go well with you. So that you will increase greatly as I deny the God of your ancestors promised you by giving you a land flowing with milk and honey. Listen to what he tells them to pray. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. He had to tell them that. Listen, listen, Israel. You spent 40 years in the wilderness being trained. Now you have to hear, you've got to do it. When we get together every week and we pray the Shema together, here it is, right here. This is why we pray, because we're saying the same prayer. Good there. We're praying the same prayer and being in alignment with the house of Israel for Israel to hear so that check one two is that better check check so that they'll actually hear this applies more today I would say some may disagree than it did then because they are back in the land since 1948 officially here is, we're waiting for Israel to hear. In a couple weeks during the class, maybe the first, fifth week we have, we'll do some videos of some of the situations that are def connected to this going on in Israel right now. So he gives them the Shema. 
And then he continues in verse 5, And you are to love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your resources. The Ve'ahavta portion. These words which I am ordering you today are to be in your heart. And you are to teach them carefully to your children. You are to talk about them when you sit at home, when you are traveling on the road, and when you lie down and when you get up. They're going to have a home to sit in soon. And when they travel down a road, it will be within their own land again. Not again, it will be within their own land. And when you lie down, it will be in your own bed in your own land. They're heading home. Verse 8, tie them on your hand as a sign and put them on the front of a headband around your forehead. So again, now we have the tefillin that we uh, talked about last week. And write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. We've been waiting as a congregation to actually affix our mezuzah. I thought about doing it when we first moved in. I just never had the peace to do it. And I said, I don't know when exactly to do it, Lord. I'll wait. And earlier in the year, the Lord was dealing me to do it when we get to this verse today. So after we're done with this, we'll go ahead and do that as a congregation. When Adonai, your God, has brought you into the land, he swore to your ancestors uh, that he would give you cities, and, cities great and prosperous, which you didn't build. This whole idea of being part of the house of Israel. When you're connected to the house of Israel, then what happens? Then you're able to partake of the blessings that are given to the house of Israel. All of the foreigners who were with them who went to Sinai together, they came there as Egyptians and, other, and Africans and um, other type of, of, um, of Arabs and, and Asians. And there are a whole lot of people there were Europeans, a whole lot of people who were there who left Egypt with them, who were called the mixed multitude. But once they were saved Torah and they accepted it, then they became Kolam Israel, the, the, the whole house of Israel. They were never called the mixed multitude again. They were one with, they were one with Israel. They were one with the house of Israel. They were part of Hallelujah. As I was preparing this, I said, Lord, which, you know, you get to some of these portions that you go over, over and over. And I just got to thinking and saying, Lord, what does that mean? What does it actually mean to be one with the house of Israel? And how does one go from wherever they are, if you're not Jewish, into the fullness of being one with the house of Israel? This actually means different things to different people in that everyone is on a different place on the road, a different place on the journey. As a congregation, we are growing into the being in the fullness of connected with the house of Israel. Everything we do, everything we teach, every week we meet on Shabbat, it's that idea, that understanding of that's where we're going. We're, we talk about all the time about where we heading to where? To Jerusalem, to the God of the house of Jacob, so he will teach us. There's a lot of steps between here and Jerusalem, naturally and spiritually, uh, the, t the timeline, all of this. But it's important that we continue just like the children of Israel did. They're ready to walk into the promised land. And before they did, there was more required of them more instruction given to them. We talk about all the time about finding yourself in Torah, finding yourself in Torah, finding our congregation in Torah. Here's where we are. About to take another step in the, the ongoing grafting into the house of Israel. Hallelujah. I want to read something to you here. There's just a whole, there's always a lot of ridiculous conversation online about oral law and oh, the oral law, oh my gosh. And the people who do that kind of stuff tells me one thing. They wouldn't know oral law from 
written law. They, they don't, just don't know. They just say a lot of things. And the other thing it tells me is that they reject most of what, what Yeshua had to say or much of what he had to say. They reject what uh, Rabbi Shaul, what all the different ones had to say because they brought up oral law all the time, but they don't know exactly where and how. So we'll talk about some of that uh, more today. But before we do, I want to spend a few moments talking to you about the mezuzah. And bear with me one second to change screens here. Anybody here already have a mezuzah on their home? Yeah, good, good, good. Do you have a uh, kosher cloth in it? The kosher scroll? Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. A lot of people put them up, there's no scrolls. They don't know there's no scrolls. You got to get those separate. I want to have a little article I came across. I want to read a few things to you. All right, here we go. So what does the word mezuzah mean? Specifically. It means doorpost. Do you remember when the, in the portion where it talks about if a slave wants to uh, leave or, you know, he can decide to stay, and if he decides to stay, that the master is to take him to the doorpost to the mezuzah? And to take an awl and pierce his ear as a sign. Um, that's the term mezuzah. Um, it means doorpost, multiple mezuzah, mezuzot. Um, you see inside, I can actually show you the little kosher clap we have here. To, So here's the one that will. Sorry, head up, son. That we will be straight from Israel. A kosher one has been. And this is handwritten. You see how little that is? I mean, that's incredible. It goes inside, yeah. It goes inside the mezuzah. Um, and this contains. What does it say on it? Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Um, and I have an appointment tonight to affix a mezuzah at someone else's front door. I'm going to, do you want your, hang on, wait to get her attention. Would you like your mezuzah affixed today? Okay, so after Oneg. I'm going to go ahead, and for the week, we're going to go ahead and shut off the camera so we can talk. But Shabbat Shalom to everyone who's watching. I pray you've enjoyed this time with us. Look forward to seeing you next week. And you can always go to our website, uh, emekelohim.org, and see all of our teachings. We're on Facebook and YouTube as well. So with that, lehitraot, shavuot tov.